Hey, this is Jay, and this is a quick tutorial for running local video transcriptions with Whisper and N8N. Uh, so I've already kind of created a video very similar to this where we were running N8N local, but we were using the OpenAI API for Whisper, um, which is great. It works fine, but it has a pretty major rest uh, restriction where that you can only use 25 megabyte files. Um, so, I mean, that's fine. That's a decent amount of audio. I think it's it was anywhere from like 15 to 25 minutes of audio, depending on uh, the density of words, I guess. Uh, but that's a pretty huge restriction. And then if you wanted to do anything longer than that, you would either uh, mo mostly you just have to break up the file into multiple chunks, um, which is a lot of extra work. Um, so in this case, though, running it locally, we can actually transcribe as long as you want, as long as it fits in the, the memory of your computer or wherever you've got it cloud hosted, um, then it's fair game. Uh, so that just uh, comes with two restrictions um, that you need to run in it in locally. And then you also need to uh, install Whisper locally. So first step is installing Python um, to be able to install Whisper itself. Um, so if you don't have Python installed, you can get that installed. And then once that's going, we also need Python installed to be able to use pip. Um, so we can do pip install open AI Whisper. Uh, so doing that will hopefully give you access to the actual Whisper command, uh, which you can kind of see there already. So when I run Whisper in my terminal, something comes back like this. So I know that Whisper is actually running in the background. Um, so then that would give us access to be able to run that in our execute node in N8N local. Um, so I do have a video about running N8N local, so uh, where I walk through that a little bit more, so you can go check that out. Uh, but in this case, uh, really the main thing here, let's clear this real quick, is that um, the benefit of running N8N local here is being able to turn on this flag of N8N default binary data mode. Uh, and then we can set that equal to file system. Uh, so this gives N8N uh, access to the entire system that it's running on, um, and it doesn't restrict the amount of memory that it can use for uh, file processing, which I believe it does by default uh, when you're running the actual init end service. Um, and that's why you can't do super huge files because like they have to keep their systems more efficient. But in this case, you can give your, whatever can fit on your computer, you can give init end access to it. Um, so that way you can run much bigger files. Uh, so let's go ahead and run that. And then that's just the flag that you set before running um, init end start itself. So once you've got init end running like that, uh, I'm going to come back into here. And there we go. Uh, and I'm going to change this up a little bit. But the essentially the flow is to execute that command, read the file, and then we've got the, the transcript to use for whatever we want. Um, so rather than manual trigger, I'm going to do a local, oops, a local file trigger. There we go. And we're going to look for changes involving a specific folder. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to do watch the input folder. And we're going to watch for a file added. Uh, and then to see what's going on here, um, like I said, I'm running, I'm actually running N8N local in this folder. Um, so it can see the input folder and it can watch for changes. And so actually I'm going to move this back out so we can retrigger it. All right. Okay. So if I move short test in, oh wait, hang on, let's go ahead and start the test. So let's test this local file trigger. It's going to look for changes in the input folder. Uh, so I'm going to go to that input folder and then drag that in. So effectively, we've triggered that, hey, a file got added to the input folder that we were watching. So now we have the data about that file, uh, which makes this a lot easier uh, for this, this uh, workflow to run. So now that we have info about the file, uh, we can do execute command. So with execute command, uh, what we want to do is basically this is the whisper command that we're going to use uh, to be able to generate the transcript. And so you just would run whisper. And then in this case, we're going to put the entire path of the file that we were watching for. Uh, and then um, the, there's a couple flags here that we need. So model base, um, that just means it runs the base model. I think there's a couple different options for Whisper. You could run some smaller models for more efficiency or whatever, but I think this is fine. Um, we want the output format to be in text. Um, by default, it'll give you like a bunch of other... Um, bunch of other files like vtt and srt and all these other subtitle files i think even a json file uh, and then there's one more flag that i want there we go so i want oh wait actually nope that's not it i need there we go i need output directory uh just for organization's sake we're gonna have one more flag on here of output directory and i'm gonna say input um, because that matches the folder that we were watching. Um, you could, I guess, dynamically like pull it out of the path, but there's no reason here if you've already kind of had hard-coded. 
Uh, but what this is going to do is that it's going to tell it where to output the text file. Um, in this case, by default, if you didn't put that, it'll output um, the text file in the root directory of where in it is running. So in this case, it would dump it into init and local. I'd rather it just dump it into, you know, whatever input. It could go to output or whatever, but just a way to specify where that goes. So if we run this, this should grab the video file and uh, create the transcript, uh, create the transcript uh, in a text file. And there we go. And we can see that it standard outs of the actual transcript. I'm doing just a short one for demonstration purposes here. Um, but as you can see, the standard out is like not the most readable. It's got, you know, some stuff at the beginning to say it detected the language and then it's got the timestamps in there. Uh, so, you know, not the cleanest. Uh, so the next thing that we're going to do then is we're going to actually read that file. And in this case, we can do that through. So what I'm going to do actually is grab the path of the file originally. Uh, so this was the local tri local file trigger, right? So this is the actual video file. Uh, but I don't want the MP4. I want the text file that was created. So what I'm going to do is do um, dot, and then we're going to replace. So let's replace, and I'm just going to look for dot MP4 and change it to dot text. Okay, and as you can see here, what the result is that I've switched to looking for the folder of input slash short test dot text. And so when that uh, whisper command ran, it automatically just took the name of whatever the file was that it loaded. So in this case, the video file was short test. Um, it created a dot text of the same name. So short text, short test dot text. Uh, so that's the that's the transcript by itself in clean, clean language uh, without the timestamps. Um, so we're going to grab that file and test setup. And cool. So now we have that actual file. Um, and again, this is in like the binary file, so it's not readable yet. Uh, so what we're going to do is then uh, extract that data to turn it into, in this case, I'm just going to turn it into JSON. Uh, so if we do that, then there we go. Now we've got the actual, actually, no, not, I, I lied. This is actually uh, extract text from file. So we have the text file, and we're just going to actually read that file. Uh, and now we have the transcript from the video. Uh, it does include the backslashes, so you guys, you still could do a little bit more um, cleaning up as far as uh, as far as that goes. But um, but now you have the transcript from a full video. Um, so let's do that's a really short video. I'm gonna do a little bit bigger file just to kind of show uh, show uh, the real advantage to this. So let's go ahead and retrigger this. And as you might have already seen, I have a gigabyte video. Uh, that we're just going to jump in, uh, drop into the input. So that should get picked up. It does right away. So we're good to go on that. So now when we do execute command again, um, it's now we're now using the full test MP4. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run this. And this is going to take a minute. Uh, so this is to, just to kind of prove that I am running Whisper locally on my machine. I'm not calling out to an API to do this. Uh, but this is going to be a little bit slower. So the only restriction here is that it's transcribing the entire um, video. Now, luckily, um, again, we're kind of taking advantage here because we're running it locally. So Whisper is actually probably doing the same thing I did in the last video where it uh, will actually strip the audio out of this video and then transcribe just the audio because it's, it's a way smaller file if you only grab the audio, not the video. Um, but yeah, it has to go through the entire thing. And so this is where it just depends on the power of your machine. Uh, in this case, I am running on a MacBook 3. Um, so they have that whole integrated like APU or whatever it is, everything or IPU integrated processing unit uh, where graphics is integrated on the chip as opposed to having a graphics processor and a regular processor. Uh, so uh, it's a little slower. Um, if you had a, uh, if you're running this on a computer that actually has like a GPU, so if you had something like a whatever, a 3080 or 4090 or whatever, um, it will be considerably faster to transcribe uh, the entire video. Uh, but this video, I think, is about 18 minutes long, and uh, it doesn't take that long. It was, it was when I've done some tests, it usually takes close to, uh, sometimes up to the time of the video to be able to transcribe that video. So if the video was like an hour long, uh, it'll take it, you know, 45-ish minutes to transcribe the entire video. Um, this, uh, I think it gets a little bit slower as the video gets longer and longer. Uh, but again, if you're, you know, running this in the cloud or whatever, if you have, you know, GPU, um, 
cores, I guess, or access or whatever that might help. But otherwise, you're kind of just at the mercy of uh, the compute power for wherever you are running in it in local. Um, but uh, this is uh, doing its thing. It's going to transcribe the entire uh, video, uh, really just the audio from the video. Um, it's going to output it into the text format. Uh, and then we told it to then put it into the input um, folder when it's done. So uh, we're getting close here. Uh, I might just let it go and I'll jump back when it's when it's complete. Or I'll probably jump back like right before it's complete just to show that it's still running. Oh, well, there we go, actually. Don't need to. Successfully talked through the entire thing. All right. So I think actually now, now that I remember, this is like a 12-minute video because I think I remember the last few timestamps. So that wasn't too bad. There's a few minutes of transcribing. Uh, but now we have a full transcription from a video that was over a gig, which you would not have been able to send into Whisper. Um, so same deal here. This is automatically going to look for uh, the the path of the input file and then just switch it from MP4 to .text instead, um, which if we look at that, that should be what happened. So I dragged in test MP4, and then we just created this text file, text test.txt based on test.mp4. Um, so we're good to go on that. And then actually, if I open this up real quick, uh, there we go. Yeah, this is, there we go. It's a clean transcript. So we're all good on that. And now we can grab uh, that file itself. So again, we have to actually read the file to get the content out of it. Uh, and then we can extract the the text out of that file. So there we go. And then we have like a full clean transcript of a 12 minute video. Um, again, that's like, that's kind of right on the board of where you actually could have uh, transcribed. Um, but now that you have that text, you can then uh, dump it off into wherever you like. So uh, in this code node, uh, I have I have the data ready to go. And, you know, you can send it off to wherever. Or, you know, if you wanted to message yourself about it or whatever, probably this would really just kind of go to like a Google Doc or something like that and use that as a source to then create other content out of and uh, potentially trigger another workflow. Um, but that's pretty much it. Pretty much a straightforward walkthrough of how to locally transcribe um, video and audio using Whisper and Local N8N. Uh, let me know if you have any other comments or questions. You could obviously make this a lot more complicated. You could wrap this in a Docker. You could run, you know, Whisper in a couple different ways as well. So a lot of options here, but hopefully that at least gives you an idea that it's actually really pretty straightforward on how to run this. Um, so let me know if there's anything else you want to see as far as like the, the local whisper and any other innate tutorials. Uh, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.